I recently watched a video that you may be aware of by analog photographer Alina Besanova where she acquired an ungodly amount of film and tests once and for all if airport x-ray machines damage your film negatives. She shot dozens of rolls in controlled conditions and used multiple film speeds and most importantly had a control, that is a set of rolls she left at home. She tested both monochrome and color film as well as what the effect was after one scan and several scans. The short answer is yes, it absolutely does affect your film, but I still highly recommend checking out the video, which I'll link as it's incredibly informative and entertaining. It got me thinking though as to why people are still asking this question because I often hear both sides. People have said that they had their film scanned and it was fine and people saying that their film was ruined. So naturally I asked myself how this question was treated over time and I got some interesting results. Welcome to This Old Camera, I'm your host Azrael Knight and on this episode we look at airport x-rays versus film, a history. The first mention of x-ray machines in airports we'll touch on today involves a lawsuit in 1977. Mentioned in the April issue of Popular Photography, the news release is titled A Save the Film Federation and reads as follows. The Chicago Area Camera Clubs Association and the SEMA Products Corp are suing the Federal Aviation Agency. The plaintiffs want the FAA to change its signs that tell passengers about x-ray baggage inspection. At present, the signs state, inspection will not affect ordinary undeveloped film. Photographers are claiming airport x-rays can really fog up the film, and a man named John Rupkalvitz, who did a year-long study, stated, out of every 100 rolls of film passing through airport x-ray screening machines, 17 will probably be damaged, at least to some extent, and you never know when the damage will occur. It may not happen at all. It could take place after more than one airport security check on the same trip, or your film could get zapped the very first time through. In my opinion, running film of any type through airport x-ray screening machines is like driving an automobile without insurance. You just never know when your number is up. In short, the call to action here was to have the signs changed, giving the public proper notice of the potential damage to their film. In 1979, Bill Herder wrote an article in the March issue of Peterson's Photographic in response to a concerned reader by the name of Lawrence Nobis. I am confused over airport x-ray machines and whether or not they harm film. I do a lot of traveling and nearly always take photos, but not until recently have I become suspicious of these machines. The signs above the machines say they don't harm film, and my film has never been harmed but several friends claim that these machines do irreversible damage. Could you straighten us out once and for all? Herder doesn't mince words when he immediately says that it would seem that airport x-ray machines do harm undeveloped film more often than not, but nobody in authority is willing to admit it. Of all people, a high school kid from Chicago named David Joseph won the Illinois State Science Fair for conducting his own research on the effects of x-rays in film and concluded that the device Devices harm undeveloped film by increasing grain size, raising the exposure index, lowering acutance, sharpness, and light transmission, and worsening overall contrast. Herder also spoke with employees at the LA International Airport, and while they said they did not notice anything unusual about their finished prints, when asked if people complained, they conceded that it happens, quote, all the time. Calibration, machine type, and other variables made it difficult to determine just how much damage they would do as there were many inconsistencies. Lead pouches may not be foolproof and European airports have stronger machines. The conclusion was that it was the customer's right, according to the FAA, to ask for hand inspection, and this is recommended again in the May issue when discussing travel. That doesn't always work though, as mentioned in the June 1984 issue of Photo Life. The problem that people are encountering is that visual inspection of carry-on luggage is not permitted in many European airports and is simply not a traveler's right in many nations. It is imperative then to take precautions to safeguard irreplaceable photographic memories from obliteration. Photolife's recommendation is to use lead laminated pouches that will guard against most machines. Still no guarantees though. 
An inspection victory was accomplished in Europe by 1985, however, thanks to the efforts of the US-based X-ray Damage Awareness Committee and thousands of petitioners, the Swiss Federal Office of Civil Aviation recently announced that henceforth, hand inspection of photo equipment will be permitted at all Swiss airports. Six neighboring airport authorities in Belgium, Denmark, France, Holland, Italy, and Spain are being strongly encouraged to follow suit. A year later, they were still fighting with these six countries, according to this report in Darkroom and Creative Camera Techniques magazine in their January 1986 issue. Misinformation from people conducting these tests are another problem. Peter Greensburg of the Washington Post nearly missed his flight when he insisted on a hand inspection as published on April 14, 1985. Not long ago, I almost missed a flight from London when I refused to pass my camera gear under the x-ray machine and insisted on hand inspection. The security officer angrily insisted that the machine would not harm my film, but I was not prepared to believe him. He was, after all, a security officer, not a photo technician. In the same article, the FAA flat out denies the issue. Although much speculation exists regarding the subject of possible x-ray damage to film, we are, to date, unaware of any specific instance of such damage that is substantiated by factual evidence. By the mid-1980s, it was pretty clear to the average photographer that x-rays do indeed have an effect on film, even on a single pass, and especially in Europe where the machines are stronger. This May 1986 article in Peterson's Photographic touches on all these points. That while Kodak states excessive amounts may cause objectionable fogging and extraneous shadow images on your film, the article concluded that the surest protection is to simply not let it happen. That was basically like when sex ed class told you that the best protection from an STI or unwanted pregnancy was abstinence. Despite the efforts to change the laws in Europe and the right to hand inspection in North America, companies offered their own solutions, like film pouches that were lead-lined and tags for your luggage that said, photographer, with FAA guidelines printed on the reverse. Here's a hard shell case that holds four rolls of 35mm or two 120 rolls. But the solutions were flawed. We've heard already that hand inspection comes down to a single, underpaid security officer, and these lead line products only work to a certain extent. By 1989, there didn't seem to be any answers either. In this January article by Studio Photography, X-Rays and Film, an update, they even mentioned John Rupkalvis. Now in 1989, the debate continues with even more serious ramifications because of the increased sensitivity of photographic products to the potential damage that may result from exposure to this type of radiation. The results of Rupkalvis' study are still valid. The same six countries are mentioned again, and now Austria and England are also added to the list of countries that do not grant a hand inspection. Also mentioning John Rupkalvis the same year was Outdoor and Travel Photography magazine in their fall issue, and note that the powers that be are still, a decade later, denying the issue. Despite proof from tests of X-ray systems worldwide and the accumulation of supportive data from the personal experiences of photographers, Airport security personnel are reluctant to permit visual inspection of film, continuing to state that x-rays are harmless. Furthering the issue that your precious photos come down to a single, underpaid, and misinformed person, a real-life example is also given. Although in the United States the FAA mandates that everyone is entitled to a hand inspection, many cases of poorly informed airport personnel are still reported. For example, recently news photographer Luc Fraza of Agents France Press had to plead fervently to keep his work from being exposed to x-rays at Los Angeles International Airport. He was refused hand inspection of his film and loaded camera by security personnel who claim that x-rays are harmless. Eventually his film was inspected by hand, but it required an argument and delay in getting to his flight. To minimize the risk, professionals recommend that you keep your film separate in a clear plastic bag, arrive early, and most of all, be polite. At this point, I was seeing a pretty consistent message across multiple publications. Don't let them x-ray your film, not even once. That is, until the year 2000. In an article titled, Latest Update on Airport X-ray Film Zapping, Herbert Kepler makes the following claim. 
Some parts of the traveling public is aware that there is x-ray danger at airports, but most are erroneously convinced that danger concerns carry on luggage at the security checkpoints. Actually, film passed through hand luggage x-ray are virtually free from damage, no matter the ISO speed of the film. And while x-ray is cumulative, even large numbers of passes through the hand luggage devices produces virtually no damage. Complaints in recent years about carry-on x-ray ruining film have often been traced to improper photo finishing, which the processor then tries to blame on x-ray machines. I had to read this several times to be sure I was reading it right. Herbert Kepler, and by proxy, popular photography, siding with the FAA that x-rays from carry-on inspection do not harm film even after multiple exposures and regardless of film speed. No wonder the public seems to be confused nowadays if this is the message. Now they do concede that film as check baggage runs the risk of being scanned and that will damage the film, and they even show an example. But the test of hand luggage x-rays is missing. Curious. I found this rabbit hole of conflicting information fascinating, so I'm ecstatic that someone like Lena just took up the gauntlet and said fine, I'll do it myself. I'm sure the laws and machines have changed a few more times over the last 24 years, but really it doesn't matter. Your precious film can and often does come down to a single person, and as film becomes more and more alien to the younger generation, it'll be harder to explain. How do you protect your film when traveling? Let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, consider a one-time PayPal donation. Even a small amount helps. I'd like to thank PayPal donor Mitchell Walker and Patreon subscriber Adam Ramadan. Be sure and follow me on social media and join my weekly newsletter where you can catch up on all my hijinks. And until next time, stay classic.